Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, are a class of medications that are prescribed to treat depression and anxiety disorders. They work by increasing the levels of the neurotransmitters serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. SNRIs are believed to help regulate mood by increasing norepinephrine and serotonin activity in the brain. Norepinephrine helps influence attention and response actions, while serotonin impacts mood. SNRIs block the reabsorption, reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine into cells, which makes more of these neurotransmitters available in the brain. SNRIs are typically prescribed to treat major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, fibromyalgia, nerve pain. By balancing levels of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain, SNRIs can help stabilize moods and reduce anxiety and pain symptoms for many patients. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, were first developed in the 1980s and 1990s. Some key events in the history of SNRIs include, in 1982, the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly began researching and developing duloxetine under the code name LY248686. Eli Lilly officially launched duloxetine under the brand name Cymbalta in 2004 as an SNRI after obtaining FDA approval. Venlafaxine was discovered by Wyeth researchers in the late 1980s. It was approved by the FDA in 1993 under the brand name Effexor. Venlafaxine was the first SNRI brought to market. In 1994, milnacipran was approved in Europe and Japan for the treatment of depression. It was originally developed by Pierre Faber Medicament and called Ixil. In 2009, the FDA approved milnacipran in the United States for fibromyalgia under the brand name Savella. The desvenlafaxine is a synthetic form of the major active metabolite of venlafaxine. It was developed by Wyeth, now Pfizer, and was approved by the FDA in 2008 under the brand name Pristique. The development of these early SNRIs built upon previous research on tricyclic antidepressants and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. SNRIs offer a broader mechanism of action by inhibiting the reuptake of both serotonin and norepinephrine neurotransmitters in the brain. This dual action approach aimed to provide greater efficacy in treating depression and anxiety disorders. Types of SNRIs. Selective serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, are a class of antidepressant medications that work by blocking the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. This allows these neurotransmitters to accumulate, leading to improved mood and feelings of well-being. There are several SNRIs that have been approved for clinical use. The main SNRIs are Duloxetine, Cymbalta, Venlafaxine, Effexor, Desvenlafaxine, Pristique, Levomilnasopran, Fetsima, Milnacipran, Savella, while SNRIs share a similar mechanism of action, there are some key differences between the medications. Duloxetine is approved to treat major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, diabetic neuropathy, fibromyalgia, and chronic musculoskeletal pain. It has balanced effects on serotonin and norepinephrine. Venlafaxine is used for major depression, anxiety disorders, and panic disorder. At lower doses, it acts mostly on serotonin, but at higher doses, it inhibits norepinephrine reuptake as well. Desvenlafaxine is a major metabolite of venlafaxine. It is also approved for major depressive disorder, but has fewer interactions with other medications. Levomilnasopran has greater potency for norepinephrine reuptake inhibition over serotonin. It is used for major depressive disorder. Der milnasopran blocks norepinephrine more potently than serotonin. It is FDA approved for fibromyalgia. So in summary, while SNRIs share a similar mechanism of action, they differ in their potency for serotonin versus norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. This can lead to slight differences in their clinical effects and approved treatment indications. Mechanism of action for SNRIs. SNRIs increase levels of serotonin and norepinephrine by preventing their reuptake into neurons. Specifically, SNRIs block the reuptake transporters for serotonin, 5-HT, and norepinephrine, NE, increasing the amount of these neurotransmitters available in the synaptic cleft. This enhances neurotransmission for both serotonin and norepinephrine. Unlike selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, which only act on serotonin, SNRIs target both serotonin and norepinephrine. By modulating two neurotransmitter systems, SNRIs can be more effective for some individuals. However, they also tend to have more side effects due to their broader action. The dual action mechanism of SNRIs makes them effective for treating depression, anxiety, chronic pain, and other conditions. 
However, it's important to be aware of possible side effects like insomnia, drowsiness, nausea, and changes in appetite. Work closely with your doctor to find the optimal dosage with manageable side effects. Overall effectiveness. SNRIs are considered effective and first-line treatment options for major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and neuropathic pain. Multiple studies have found SNRIs to have similar efficacy to SSRIs in treating depression and anxiety. In head-to-head -head trials comparing SNRIs to SSRIs, efficacy rates are often comparable. For example, in randomized controlled trials, venlafaxine XR and paroxetine had similar remission rates around 35-45% for major depression after 6-12 weeks of treatment. In general, SNRIs demonstrate slightly higher response rates than SSRIs in the treatment of major depressive disorder. In meta-analyses, the average response rate of SNRIs was approximately 63% compared to 59% for SSRIs. However, there is heterogeneity among individual SNRIs. For example, duloxetine may have better efficacy than other SNRIs for depression. Some research suggests SNRIs may have particular efficacy advantages over SSRIs in certain patient populations. For example, several studies have found venlafaxine XR to be more effective than SSRIs for depression in older adults. SNRIs are also considered first-line pharmacological options for depression accompanied by painful physical symptoms, given their additional effects on norepinephrine. Overall, SNRIs are very effective antidepressant and anti-anxiety medications with high response rates. While similar to SSRIs, they may offer slight efficacy advantages for some patients and conditions, their dual action on serotonin and norepinephrine is thought to underlie their robust therapeutic effects for mood and anxiety disorders. Dosages. SNRIs are available in oral capsule, tablet, and liquid solution forms. Dosage varies depending on the specific medication. Venlafaxine, Effexor. The recommended starting dosage is 75 mg per day, taken in two or three divided doses with food. The dosage may be increased up to 225 mg per day if needed. Extended release capsules can be taken once daily. Desvinlafaxine, Pristique. The recommended starting dosage is 50 mg once daily. The dosage can be increased up to 100 mg per day if needed. It should be taken at the same time each day. Deloxetine, Cymbalta. The recommended starting dosage is 30 mg once daily with or without food. The dosage may be increased up to 60 mg per day based on the patient's response. Levomilnasopran, Fetzima. The recommended starting dosage is 20 mg once daily. The dosage can be increased up to 120 mg once daily if needed. It should be taken with food. Milnesipren, Savella. The recommended starting dosage is 12.5 to 25 mg twice daily. The dosage may be increased up to 100 mg twice daily within the first week. It should be taken with food and fluids. In general, SNRIs are taken once or twice daily. Starting at a low dose and slowly increasing over time reduces side effects. Doctors monitor patients and make dosage adjustments based on effectiveness and tolerability. Side effects. SNRIs may cause some side effects. Here are the most common ones to be aware of. Headache. Headaches are very common when starting an SNRI. They typically improve over time. Nausea. Nausea is another very common side effect that tends to go away after the first few weeks of treatment. Taking the medication with food can help reduce nausea. Dry mouth. SNRIs can reduce saliva production, leading to a dry mouth. Sipping water regularly can help. Drowsiness. Feeling sleepy is a common side effect that is usually worst when first starting an SNRI. Taking the medication at bedtime can help with this. Dizziness. Dizziness or lightheadedness may occur when standing up due to blood pressure changes. Getting up slowly and carefully can prevent falls. Insomnia. Some patients experience insomnia and trouble sleeping, especially with evening doses. Taking the medication in the morning may improve sleep. Constipation. Bowel changes like constipation are possible. Staying hydrated, exercising, and eating high-fiber foods can help regulate bowel movements. Sexual problems. SNRIs may cause decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, or difficulty reaching orgasm. Discuss any sexual side effects with your doctor. There are also some rare but potentially serious risks and warnings to be aware of when taking an SNRI. Serotonin syndrome. Taking an SNRI with certain other drugs like Tramadol can dangerously increase serotonin levels. Seek medical help immediately if this occurs. Increased suicide risk. Suicidal thoughts are a possibility, especially for young adults. Closely monitor mood changes, especially early in treatment. 
Withdrawal symptoms. Stopping an SNRI too quickly can cause unpleasant withdrawal symptoms. Do not stop taking the medication without consulting your doctor first. Seizures. SNRIs may increase seizure risk in those prone to seizures. Use caution when operating machinery or driving until knowing how the medication affects you. Liver damage. SNRIs can rarely cause liver injury. Get medical help if symptoms like jaundice, abdominal pain, or dark urine occur. Bleeding SNRIs can affect platelet function and may increase bleeding risk. Use caution with drugs like NSAIDs that also increase bleeding. Discontinuation syndrome. Stopping an SNRI too quickly can cause discontinuation syndrome, which occurs when the levels of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain drop rapidly. This leads to withdrawal symptoms that can be quite severe. The most common symptoms of discontinuation syndrome include flu-like symptoms, fatigue, muscle aches, chills, fever, nausea, vomiting, sensory disturbances, dizziness, electric shock sensations, tingling, burning, blurred vision, sleep disturbances, insomnia, nightmares, vivid dreams, mood disturbances, irritability, anxiety, crying spells, emotional lability, cognitive disturbances, confusion, hyperarousal, racing thoughts, depersonalization, neurological disturbances, headache, tremors, sensations of head movement, paresthesias, vertigo, seizures. To minimize these discontinuation symptoms, SNRIs need to be tapered slowly over a period of weeks to months, depending on the specific medication, dose, and duration of use. The tapering schedule needs to be individually tailored and carried out under a doctor's supervision. Typical tapering guidelines recommend reducing the dosage by about 25% every one, two weeks. However, some people may need to taper even more slowly at 10% dose reductions every couple weeks. The last stage of discontinuation often involves tapering beads or liquid preparations to allow very small dose adjustments. Patience and slow tapering is key to prevent severe discontinuation syndrome symptoms. Interactions. SNRIs can interact with other medications and substances, which can increase side effects or cause dangerous reactions. Patients taking an SNRI should use caution with the following. Mouse, do not take SNRIs within two weeks of stopping an MAOI antidepressant. Taking an SNRI too soon after an MAOI can cause serious, even fatal reactions, including very high blood pressure. Other antidepressants. Taking an SNRI along with other antidepressants like SSRIs or tricyclics can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome, a severe reaction with symptoms like confusion, headaches, shivering, sweating, high fever, and more. NSAIDs. Taking an SNRI with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or aspirin may increase the risk of bleeding. Patients should limit NSAID use and monitor for bruising bleeding. Blood thinners. SNRIs can enhance the blood thinning effects of warfarin, heparin, enoxaparin, and increase bleeding risk. Alcohol. Drinking alcohol while taking an SNRI may cause drowsiness, dizziness, and impair thinking slash judgment. Avoid alcohol or limit intake. St. John's wort. This herb can increase serotonin levels and lead to serotonin syndrome when combined with SNRIs. 5-HTP supplements. Taking 5-HTP with SNRIs may also increase serotonin too much. Do not combine these. Same supplements. This can increase the risk of serotonin syndrome if not monitored carefully by a psychiatric prescriber. Conclusion. SNRIs are a class of antidepressant medications that increase levels of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. They work by blocking the reuptake of these neurotransmitters, allowing them to accumulate and positively influence mood. The major types of SNRIs include venlafaxine, duloxetine, desvenlafaxine, levomilnesopran, and milnesopran. While they all share a similar mechanism of action, there are slight differences in their chemical structures that lead to varying potencies and side effect profiles. Overall, SNRIs have demonstrated efficacy in treating major depressive disorder, anxiety disorders, neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia, and other conditions. They can be an excellent option for those who do not respond sufficiently to SSRIs. SNRIs may also cause fewer sexual side effects than SSRIs in some people. With proper dosage and administration, SNRIs can significantly improve symptoms of depression and anxiety. They should be taken regularly and not stopped suddenly to avoid withdrawal effects. NRIs can be used safely alone or in conjunction with other medications or therapy. Under the guidance of a medical provider, SNRIs have the potential to greatly enhance mental health and quality of life. Thank you for watching this video on serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. I hope you found it helpful and informative. 
If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from it. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to The Anxious Resistance, where we explore various topics related to mental health and well-being. Your support means a lot to us and helps us spread awareness and education. Until next time, stay safe and take care of yourself.